Hi, I'm Chris Landerson. This is Maker Size. In this episode, I complete the auto feed mechanism for the Shaper project. Now, this is a longer term project, and although I've modeled this machine in Fusion 360, I'm following the design by David Gingry. And all those details can be found published in his book on the Shaper. I have about 14 videos that get this project up to this point, and if you're interested, they're all in the playlist. I'll link down below. Now, since I have this shaper modeled, it makes it pretty easy to use automated tools like my 3D printer or the X-Carve. Many of those 3D printed parts seem like they're sturdy enough to use directly in the project in low stress applications. However, there's pieces like this drive wheel and drive plate that I could tell just weren't well suited to that particular application. So that's where the X-Carve came in handy. I used an eighth of an inch single flute upcut bit and I ran it at a depth of 10 thousandths of an inch based on the spindle speed of 18,000 RPMs and the chip loading of 2 thousandths of an inch. My speed was 40 inches per minute. I didn't use any special aluminum alloy, I just used what I had on the shelf. And uh, the parts did require a little bit of cleanup after they came off the machine. Uh, if nothing else, there are the tabs that I used, which uh, keep the part from flopping around in the recess once the bit has kind of cut it loose from the stock material. I also sanded uh, with sandpaper and filed a little bit just to make sure that, uh, in particular, the ratchet plate would mate well with the ratchet hub. With the pieces of the ratchet mechanism pretty much complete, I turned my attention to assembling the feed crank. Again, I, I'm departing kind of from the spirit of the book, which is making this machine from scrap and cast aluminum parts. However, I feel like it's, it's kind of an appropriate hybrid of really what I want maker size to be about. Simple things like making a handle for a nut so that that way I've kind of got an integrated way to tighten up the adjustment there on the feed crank. And these automated tools give you the ability to iterate on a design during prototyping. The first design of the crank block was too tight on that interior dimension and I'd made it a little small so it'd be an interference fit but it's too, too much and it cracked. So I reprinted it with no tolerance and it seemed to fit well with the bearing. Now the top where I tapped it for the set screw that goes against the linkage uh, that really isn't cutting it, and we'll talk about that a little later. With the feed crank assembled, I installed it on the crankshaft. I tapped the holes in the ratchet hub so that that way I could bolt the ratchet wheel to the ratchet hub, and the ratchet plate would rotate freely. The ratchet plate is where I mount the ratchet pawl, and I just did this by eyeball. Uh, I didn't want to model that in because I felt like that was something better done after all the parts had been cut and I could kind of get a feel of where it needed to go. So I drilled out the ratchet pawl, ratchet plate, and then I just uh, tapped the ratchet plate and I used a screw with some Loctite uh, to hold it in place. The threads on the bolt aren't an ideal bearing surface for the pawl, but if it wears out, I'll just cut a new one. The way this auto feed mechanism works is the feed crank is mounted directly to the drive shaft of the shaper. The ram makes a forward stroke and removes material and then on the back stroke as the ram is retracting on the shaper the automatic feed mechanism is advancing the cross slide lead screw and that moves the work table and the work piece over so that on the next stroke the shaper has fresh material available for the cutter to remove. I bent a 3 inch rod and used a die to cut threads on the end that inserts through the ratchet plate. And that way I can put nuts on the back side to retain it in that hole. I cut the linkage from the stock and then I installed it on the machine. I do think 3D printed parts will be just fine for the uh, drive crank mechanism. However, I wasn't real happy with the range of motion, so 
I just printed a, a little larger version of this and we'll see how that works out. I was much happier with the larger feed crank, but there's still a few problems that I want to resolve on the auto feed mechanism. I'll probably take care of these when I attach the shaper work table. First off, the crank block and the ratchet hub, those need to be cast or machined out of aluminum. And that's primarily due to the threads and ABS not really holding for the fastener. So I'm gonna make those parts out of aluminum. And the other problem that I'm gonna address is the timing. Now you may notice in the footage where I am playing with the linkages that the timing of the advance is not in sync with the RAM, or at least it's not where it's supposed to be. It should be advancing on the return stroke, but it's not currently. And that basically just means I need to rotate the crank feed so that it's timed appropriately. Not a big deal, but something I need to fix. After I had the larger feed crank installed, I played around with some of the linkage adjustments just to kind of get a feel for how the auto feed would operate. Next up, we'll be mounting the shaper work table to the cross slide and using the shaper to actually plane its own work table. I hope this project inspires you to exercise your inner maker. Thanks for watching.